No, we didn't, uh, Jerry. Uh, we've been down this road before. Uh, I've been in uh, Oakland, and I was in Chicago before when we tried to get a major league franchise. And uh, my predecessor, Dick Butler, before that, uh, there was some excitement uh, many years before that. Uh, we weren't too excited about it, and uh, as you can see, nothing has developed. It seems that perhaps in August, when they have the next meeting, the clubs might be standing in line to come here. Who would be, and who would be your choice? Well, Jerry, uh, we actually, at this time, we wouldn't care which club. Uh, preferably, we'd like to have Cleveland down here, but uh, I have nothing against Washington or the White Sox or San Diego or anyone else. This area deserves Major League Ball, and uh, I think within the near future, and I'd almost be willing to say that next year we're going to have a ball club. How would the uh, Spurs' attendance compare, say, with Cleveland or San Diego? Well, at the present time, uh, our average is 3,202. And that takes in April, May, and June, which uh, the first three months of the season, we don't really draw a great deal of people because uh, uh, school is going on. Uh, our biggest months are July and August, and our big promotions are coming on now in July and August. Uh, getting back to the question, uh, of course, uh, Cleveland is averaging just 7,300 a game, and San Diego is doing approximately the same. The White Sox have picked up some, and of course, uh, Washington is only drawing about 8,000. So in comparison with double-A ball and the triple-A ball, uh, we're doing quite well here. I think in every sport it's the same, or shall I say in every part of education it is the same. Uh, young people, boys, need examples, need heroes to go onward. And American boys have got great idols in American football, in basketball especially, ice hockey and baseball, but so far they haven't got great heroes in soccer football. So we must produce success. There is no substitute for success in soccer football. At the very moment, if we win Olympic tournaments, if we come home with a gold, silver, or bronze medal, and the next step, if our professional league is improving year by year, and we can produce a national team which is going to World Cup competition, at that very moment, boys have got examples, have heroes, and they know how to play the game and how to play the game better. This is the beginning of an end of the old and the beginning of the new. We hope to see improved service from here on in. Well, the man driving this very truck may very well be striking you before long. Oh, uh, we're not too worried about that. We think that the negotiations will end all of that, and we're hopeful to getting some results of that today. First of all, uh, I don't think it's a real alternative to say that, that we can our, let, let our localities and our states continue to push up the regressive taxes, the sales tax and the real estate tax. But some people say, well, let's, let's uh, raise more taxes locally. Uh, it's, a, it's a poor kind of tax, this type of regressive tax, particularly the real estate tax. Uh, a second alternative, of course, uh, would be for the services, the basic services like uh, highways, police, fire, teachers, to be abandoned on the local level. Uh, I don't think anybody's going to let that happen. We don't want to see a concentration of those services in the, uh, in the federal government because they're basic and it's important to keep them close to the people. Uh, the last thing is that we can have some form of revenue sharing and take the fiscal dividends implicit in the graduated income tax and move them in, under some formula into the nourishing of the lower levels of government.
but from what little I've heard in about a five-minute telephone conversation, uh, it, it appears to be a, a marked change from previous initiatives taken by the other side, and it covers three uh, points especially uh, that I've been concerned about in the uh, debate and discussion over Vietnam policy in recent weeks. It ties together, as I understand it, and again, I haven't read uh, uh, the proposal, it ties together the question of a definite date for withdrawal, uh, the withdrawal of prisoners of war before American troops are totally withdrawn, and the safe withdrawal of remaining American troops. Uh, now, this is a tie-in that those of us who have argued for a definite date for withdrawal have urged would be possible. And uh, this offer on the part of the other side would seem to substantiate uh, that judgment. Anticipating that some persons in our district might interpret our silence as implying inaction on the board's part in behalf of all of its citizens, we should like to assure the public that we are committed to the defense of the lawsuit to the end that each child in the district, regardless of race, color, or creed, shall have quality education. The board urges the community to have confidence that the board and the district are pursuing and shall continue to pursue such course. The board recognizes that in our democracy, every citizen is committed to abide by the final action of our court. That's all this whole damn thing is. That's all y'all. That's all y'all. A bunch of white racists. You're a bunch of white racists. A bunch of white racists. And I've been bust all my damn days, and it was all right then. The Board of Education of the Dallas Independent School District has been operating under the advice of competent counsel in its desegregation action presently pending in the federal court. Our counsel has insisted that we refrain from making any comment that might reflect upon the trial of the lawsuit. They have emphasized that the proper place for the trial is in the courtroom only. Members of the court in 1965 in permitting, the school, in permitting the school district's concept of neighborhood schools, and will continue to urge in the courts that the 1965 orders of the courts shall be applicable to the present as well as the future operations of its schools. The board stands together unanimously in support of these statements. Mr. Green, does this statement this morning in any way violate the court's orders not to talk? It does not, to my knowledge. Because you are saying in the statement that you will fight for the neighborhood concept. It, very definitely, we will fight for the neighborhood concept of schools, as provided in the 1965 court order. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you. Judge Terrence, what did the court actually mean when it passed that resolution this morning supporting the school board? <clears throat> that uh, resolution said to the school board that we are backing you with everything we have. That uh, any way that we can help call that plain just as plain as I can put it to you. Now, in other words, you, you wouldn't attempt to intervene in the suit unless you're asked to. Now, that, that's up to the lawyer. We don't know. We, the lawyers have to come together. And if it's wise for us to intervene, well, we'll be there. If it isn't, we'll back them in any way that we can.
Close to 2,000 Texas lawyers are meeting here in Dallas for the annual convention of the State Bar Association. Besides big-name speakers, such as Senator Edmund Muskie today and Treasury Secretary John Connolly tomorrow, most of the activity is involved in work sessions on specific areas of law, such as general practice, patents, corporation law, family law, and so on. One specific area of work is being recommended by incoming President Jim Watson of Corpus Christi. He is proposing an innovation in law in Texas whereby persons that are less trained than lawyers could take over some of the work now done by attorneys. Lawyers, uh, or that is the graduate lawyers, are more and more going into uh, government fields and in uh, uh, personal, uh, public service uh, types of work and less and less into the actual practice of the law so that it puts a, a greater burden as the society becomes more complex with more and more legal problems that uh, the lawyers who are in actual practice have got to find ways of, of streamlining the amount of time that it takes to perform a certain job. and uh, clerical help or paraprofessionals, as the term may be, legal assistance to lawyers, uh, they can cut down on the expense to a client for a given matter. In addition to matters pertaining specifically to the practice of law, the attorneys at this convention are also giving attention to a public relations program trying to improve the overall image of attorneys with the public. This is Roger McDonald, Channel 8 News on the Move at the Bar Association Convention. That's one of the plans, to help pay for the passageway and to make the pedestrian passageway a lively place to have stores. So we'd step, let's say you wanted to, to shop, you go right from, the, from our uh, lowered plaza of our park, and you go right straight in on the same grade with the passageway, and you can buy yourself a Coke and come out there. circulated in Dallas and hereby go on record as being in agreement with this petition. This petition reads, 
we, the undersigned citizens living in the area served by the Dallas Independent School District, City of Dallas, hereby state our support of the neighborhood school concept of all schools in all areas serving children of all races and creeds. We support the concept that children are entitled to transfer at will to any school in the Dallas Independent School District subject only to appropriate administrative safeguards regardless of economic status, location, race, or creed. I'm proud I'm white. Most of blacks I know are proud they're black. Most of Mexican Americans are proud they're Mexican Americans. I don't understand why everybody wants to mix everybody up and try to make everybody one. They're not. I mean, there's, there's five different types of people, or six or seven, you know, nobody can pin it down to how many different types of people they are, and they're all individual. I don't understand why everybody doesn't take everybody as an individual. Now, to me, I just, I can't understand why they want a bus. But I guess maybe I'm not old enough or something like that. After children get out of Cadier Elementary School, rather than going to Cary High School, which is less than a mile away, they will be required to go to Sequoia, which is nine and a half miles away. This is an utterly ridiculous plan. Uh, as I pointed out to the group last night, in my opinion, uh, it is simply a, a social tool that is being used in order to advance some utopian type social game. And what we're doing here is playing with our children and using them as pawns in this overall program. And you, you know what you've done? You know what you've done by your actions by the city council. Your actions here have allowed this old bigoted pseudo supposed to be still the robust jury to take action on. So he's doing the same exact dumb thing you're doing. It's wrong. Now please get to your subject. I'm going to have to have to remove as much of my My subject. I'm giving you every opportunity. Damn y'all. Damn all. Jesse Pryor, let me tell you something. Wait a minute. Jesse Pryor, why in the hell the other day out here at the school did you go and tell me about Ruth Jefferson? You said Ruth Jefferson. Why did you even mention Ruth Jefferson's name? Why did you even mention Ruth Jefferson's name? That's wrong. This is for the resolution of, uh, has this resolution been read here? Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, do I have a second? <laughs> All in favor? Uh, Opposed? After many
three months of negotiation, the Dallas-Fort Worth citizens for a free flow of information, and the office, with the aid of the Office of Communication of the United Church of Christ, have been successful in their efforts to reform the Dallas-Fort Worth broadcast media. The terms of this success means revitalization of the industry and a commitment on the part of local broadcasters to actively recruit qualified and qualifiable minority people for employment and training. It also means that the local broadcast media will place far more consideration on the reporting of minority views and those issues affecting them. These positive changes affirm that the broadcaster has a responsibility to the entire public, <clears throat> that these responsibilities cannot be t lightly taken has hereby been noted by an aware and informed citizenry. <clears throat>